wealth growing in society. People are working every day, working really hard, but they're not making true advancement until somebody had a critical juncture for Verl. That was Ms. Harden. Ms. Harden said, Verl, this scholarship application is already filled out, already got your name on it, all you gotta do is sign on it. So somebody reached out and said, hey, I think this person has a shot. I'm gonna give them a chance to change their life. That's a critical juncture that exists for all of us. And that critical juncture for Verl was somebody saying, hey, I think you can do this. I believe in you, I want to help you. And that was Ms. Harden. Ms. Harden made that happen for Verl. He maybe wouldn't have gone to college without Ms. Harden. So I think it's important for all of us to think about who is our Ms. Harden. Ms. So the other critical juncture in Verl's life, and obviously very important to me, is Ms. Harriet A. Johnston. The other critical juncture in his life who also attended the College of Idaho. That again was together they made that decision to say, hey, I'm gonna come with you to Caldwell and we're gonna live there. Going to college also in North Powder was a pretty big deal. As you can see in their wedding announcement, it was important enough, A, to announce it in the paper, and B, to announce that they were both attending the College of Idaho. This was such a big deal that in the uh, Le Grand Observer, it mentioned that Verl, a student at the College of Idaho, went to dinner with his friends at another person's home in the city. So this was not just, oh, everybody goes to college. This was an ascension point. We talked about that exponential growth in the college's ranking. Think about that person going from a life of being likely an agricultural laborer to a teacher. They get to be the critical juncture in other people's lives just because one person in one town said, I think Verl can do it. Clearly he did, obvious. So Verl went on to attend the College of Idaho, play football for a little while, and he had a, a critical juncture in his life. He's like, well, it's very important to me that I want to graduate in four years, something that's important to the college to this day. Football practice was in the afternoon, and Verl said, well, I guess I'm not going to be a football player because graduating in four years is an important factor to me. That probably led to some other instances in his life where he went on to the university, or I'm sorry, where he went on to Oregon State to get his master's degree in physical education. So you have a boy six years removed from a town of 500 going to what is clearly an elite university in the world for physical education and getting his master's degree. All because Miss Harden said, I think Verl can do it. There were also critical junctures at the college. Verl maybe not, would have not been able to join the football team had it not been for, you know, historically famous football coach Ed Troxel, who was the head football coach for the College of Idaho for two years. He said, hey, I think Verl can do this. I think he would make a great addition to our team and would be a valuable addition to what we're trying to do here. Those two people, Miss Harden and Ed Troxel, made it happen for Verl. Or, I'm sorry, Ed Troxel and Miss Harden made it happen for Verl. Another pers important person in Verl's life was Dr. Specht. When I asked, Grandpa, who's, what teacher do you remember the most? Uh, <laughs> And if you've ever met Dr. Specht, this would be a very clear answer of why it was him. <laughs> Dr. Specht was a premier expert in his field of Eastern and Western history, taught Western Civ for more than 25 years at the College of Idaho, recently retired and endowed a gift onto the college of enough that he can be a critical juncture in many students' lives to go on, uh, as well as an endowed professorship at the College of Idaho. So Frank Specht also was a critical juncture for many people. And sidebar, uh, talking to my dad and a little about the other people, I uh, heard a great story about Frank. I had the opportunity to meet Frank at some history department functions long after he was retired from the college. And he was just so, even in his 80s, probably two glasses of gin in, he was just on fire with life. He just had a sparkle in his eye constantly, and you could tell he was a little wiry, and he was just waiting to make a quip or a joke. And my uh, dad told me a funny story that Specht always liked to roll up his tie while he was talking. He'd give his lecture, and he'd about choke himself, and he'd relax. And then he'd get to a new sentence, he'd roll it up, and then relax. So my dad also had the opportunity to attend the College of Idaho for reasons very similar to myself. Which brings us to our next point. So Brent decides, you know, my grandpa went to the college, or my father went to the College of Idaho. 
I really want to be pre-med. That's really important to me. I want to help people. I think it fits within my skills and desires. I really want to help people. And at the time, and today, there is no better place to become a pre-med student than the College of Idaho. If you want to get into medical school and you live in Idaho, you should go to the College of Idaho, period. So my dad says, I want to be a doctor. I want to go to the College of Idaho. He does, because of our liberal arts curriculum, he goes, okay, I, I need to take this Western Civ class. And guess who's there? Dr. Frank Specht. Just reading down the list in his normal way, Sally, Jim, Brent, Brent Harrison. He's rolling up his tie, Brent. And he lets it go, he's like, without even looking up, he says, I hope you're a better student than your father. <laughs> Which I've never been in class with either, but I don't know who's winning that race, because I've seen the looks my dad gives and just like that smile, sly smile my grandpa is when he thinks of something funny, but he's, well, just keep it to himself. So I don't know who's the better student here. But again, there was a critical juncture. Someone decided, I want to be a doctor. What do I need to do to make that happen? I need to go to the College of Idaho, which brings us to my mother. Her critical juncture is another person. Somebody reached out and pulled up and said, Sean, here's some scholarships. I think you would, this would work for you. Without these, I don't think she would have made it to college. Again, small agricultural community, parents didn't go to college, likely would have ended up in a similar frame as Verl, you know, working their damnedest to just get by in American society in the early 80s and 90s as a woman. But instead, Mrs. Vance said, Sean, I have a scholarship for you. Let's help you fill out your FAFSA and see if we can get you somewhere that's great. So she did. She also had somebody who said, hey, you got a pretty nice voice. How about you join the show choir and we'll give you a scholarship. So again, somebody reached out and provided a critical juncture for a student in need that changed the course of their life. Brent went on to teach for many years and still does in the Caldwell School System, changing the lives of young people every day in a low-income agricultural community. Kids that maybe think, nobody in my family's been to college. I can't go to college. I don't know about scholarships. I'm a dummy. And Brent says, no, you're not. You can go to college. A lot of dummies get into college. <laughs> but they don't get into the College of Idaho which he again is a critical juncture for others. And you notice we're starting to build a theme here that somebody helps somebody and they say, it's part of their being to help someone else, that they become part of the virtuous cycle and help grow the circle of somebody pulled them up and gave them a helping hand and then someone else does too. So Mrs. Vance gave my mom a helping hand, which now she does as her work for a local agribusiness company and her volunteer time at the Business Advisory Council, knowing that there are young women just like her who maybe it's their first time in college, don't have a lot of role models or connections in the community, that she says, hey, let's help you get an internship. Hey, I think you could talk to this person. Let's help you get you know, the experience you need to be successful. The other critical juncture in their lives is like the great old school Tinder, the College of Idaho. They met each other. The critical juncture in their lives is they got to see and experience and do things together because they shared the values of helping others via their time at the College of Idaho, of which they eventually got married, and you got me. We will get to that shortly. But as you can see, it just takes one person to make a difference. We have exponential impacts. One person makes a difference for one person. They maybe make a difference for two people. Those two people make a difference for four people. And we just have exponential growth in the kinds of people who can help and are love to help others. Then you get to I. My critical juncture, I have no great story or struggle uh, coming up to college. Mine was, I put in a single college application, one. I knew where I wanted to go. I wanted to be a doctor. Better or for worse, I'm not one, probably for the betterment of the community and the social health system at large, I'm not one. But that's what I wanted to be. And I knew if I wanted to be a doctor, I needed to go to the College of Idaho. But I need to back up a little bit. Um, I'm going to give you a little preview about a critical juncture in my life, which is my now wife, Alex Grandy. So Alex, exceedingly smart. Parents kind of 
did the thing, you know, you go to U of I, you kind of just go, not real people who understand deeply what it means and all of these options. Alex is exceedingly brilliant, talks a little too fast, which is great because, you know, the two of us, but for others it can be a problem. Um, but she could have gone anywhere. But the critical juncture in her life, somebody at the College of Idaho said, this student is so good, they should qualify for one of our most prestigious options, the Heritage Scholarship. For those not in the know, the Heritage Scholarship is a full-ride scholarship for exceptional students. The Heritage Scholarship has seen better days. Uh, it was gone for a little while. Sounds like it might be coming back, which that is the critical juncture for many people. And Alex Grandy probably would not have attended the College of Idaho without the Heritage Scholarship. Therefore, I would probably not be here right now because a lot of the things that have happened in my life are a direct result of the critical juncture of meeting my wife. Which, it's funny that you bring up the Model UN of the College of Idaho, because that is where we met. Rob Daly's Model UN number one class in the fall of 2009. Alex came to the College of Idaho, was immediately successful, double majored in two fields, and then she's like, that freshman representative from Sweden is for me. So those are kind of our critical junctures, where we, one thing happened, somebody said, hey, I think this Alex girl could really benefit from this scholarship. Same thing with me, I think. Hey, I think this critical juncture of my parents going there, as well as kind of the college's opportunities as related to pre-med, changed the course of my life. My critical juncture is more related to a specific professor who really changed the course of my life and put me on the track that I am now. I lived across the hall from my now best friend, Jeff Hill, very interested in China, real Sinophile guy. So he's like, hey, you should take this Intro to East Asia class. It fits within the um, liberal arts curriculum. You should take it. Took it and was just floored. Like, this is for me. This stuff fascinates me. Uh, interestingly enough, the professor of that class was a former pupil of my grandfather, Dr. Jeff Snyder, was actually his student in Ontario in the early 1980s. And so things, again, are coming full circle, where one person can vastly change the course of another's life, which then has a huge impact on every person in their life, all their descendants, all the people they meet, all the changes that occur. So now, again, we have all of us together. We have critical junctures in each other's lives where Alex is now an attorney at Holland and Hart, a huge part of the Holland and Hart Foundation, as well as being on boards of some nonprofits, she has the biggest heart on the planet. For a corporate attorney, she maybe has the softest heart in the world. <laughs> because she cares, she wants to see and help others. When she tells me stories about some of her pro bono work and the joy of helping people become American citizens, giving them that hand up is heartbreaking to me. She has changed the course of that person's life by helping them make that happen. And sure, you know, they're, it's a minor part of their life, but those distinct moments in time can be that critical juncture where we change the course of a person's life, our community's life, and a college community as well. And so that brings us to today. We've heard a lot about people's critical juncture. Brian Bava, Mr. Uh, Ms. Vance, Ms. Harden and mine, Dr. Snyder, Alex with the Heritage Scholarship. So that brings us to today. It's important for us to realize that we can be that critical juncture in a young student's life, in a young person's life, by reaching down and helping pulling them up to join the College of Idaho community. They in, then, in turn, will then reach down and help up others. So we can grow that circle. And it's actually funny, I've been planning this talk for a long time, been thinking about it for a while, and Alex and I are sitting, kind of working on it, and she's like, hey, did you see this article about social mobility in the College of Idaho? And I was like, Absolutely. This is the biggest benefit to Idaho's community, all of us in this room, is that the College of Idaho takes people, diamonds in the rough, who could do anything if they had one person, one critical juncture to give them a hand. And that's what the college is doing. And I challenge everyone to give their time, talent, and treasure to be a critical juncture for others. Be a mentor to a new student. Advocate for the College of Idaho inside and outside of Idaho to people who want to join the College of Idaho. 
Be an advocate for your fellow alumni and help grow the college. Be the critical juncture that you want to see in others. Because if you do that for one person, they will hopefully do that for one person. And then you can continue doing so and you have exponential growth and effects of the impact that we can have on each other as well as our community and the college community as, at large. So thank you very much. Again, I wanna say please, please help grow the circle and be a critical juncture for the young and old in your life to grow the College of Idaho. It has been supremely important for my life, many people as well who've met their spouses, best friends at the College of Idaho. So be that change and that critical juncture you want to see by giving someone a hand up. Maybe it's a scholarship, maybe it's just a meeting, just to talk like, hey, let me pick your brain about what you do at your job. Or do you have any scholarship opportunities? Or do you have any internship opportunities? Alex actually contacted me today from a young man who's interested in the work that I do. I work at a SAS, we hire tons of people all the time, and I was like, we have not had a single College of Idaho intern. Not because I haven't tried, but because maybe I haven't tried quite hard enough. And it is important to me to not only grow the community of Yotes, but when I see someone succeed who's gone to the College of Idaho, that doesn't just benefit them, that benefits me. Growing the profile of the College of Idaho helps every single person in this room, because the greatness of that person is your greatness. So again, thank you very much, and please be a critical juncture in the change you want to see in others and those around you. Thank you.